Okay, so now that I'm a neatly shaved dragon, let me lecture you about morality. Morality! From an anthropological ethnological perspective, morality is completely relative, without doubt. Morality was stemming from cultural taboo of the clean and of the contaminated. Ethos is a completely different thing. It organizes action of a group into a set of behavioral principles. Ethos is beyond morality. It means character. The principles are derived from the civilizational roots of group behaviors. Yet still, still, there are people that life without morality is dangerous. That means that life without our morality is inconceivable to us. That means that your life without our morality is disgusting to us. And as long as we understand it as the coherence of the selected group and its exclusive morality, they may be right. Apart from their own group, their morality has absolutely no meaning. Let us take, for example, the uh, Hindi peninsula, their culture, cults, kingdoms, the tribes that lived there. We could uh, imagine that everything was sanctioned and indeed nothing that was human was not alien to them. From hunting on heads and beheading them to the virtuous priestesses and till the very lustful, luscious sexual looseness. Yet those lands were living in peace, in wealth, in security. They were separated from the military <clears throat> assaults. And all those things were found in the domain of the sacred, the Hindi sacred path. And those lands were not homogeneous morally, but they were combined in a koinonia, togetherness, of sacred mentality of the wholeness of life, which was appreciated by Brahman, the god of the universe. From the feast of the gods to the devourers of cadavers and feces, from the holy people of Agori cults, till the participation of Master Yogin that was conjoining with his soul in a sexual act between a king and a queen, somewhat curious only to see that this sport is to be abandoned and that he may return to his sacred practices of yogere. It was the sacredness and virginity of the nuns, the devas, and the sacred dancers and prostitutes. L yet all of this was conjoined by an ethos of sacrality, self-cultivation, and high-pitched culture. Confucius, in his commentaries to the Book of Changes, wrote, To pack something, you should let the matter completely extend. And to taste the fruit of the tree of immortality, you need to let your nature, your character, grow. Any form of forbidden censorship or the ordeals of a weird religion of the desert, Judeo-Christianity, and its uh, tent-like morality that reversed this law, and by enforcing the doctrine of forbid, stop, to things that were in their full bloom and flourishment. The golden epoch of Antic, after those weird delusions were taken over from Judaism by Christianity, was destroyed. And the progress was in a weird, twisted way, belittled. That is, it was undergoing perversions and all forms of deviations. If you tie in nature, instead of regulating it by observing the excesses and regulating with wise laws, it was let go into the movement as if in a broken mirror. It was all twisted, sick, unharmonious with all the historical implications of Judeo-Christianity in the later centuries. The culmination of it we may see now. What is subversive 
slavish idea of Judeo-Christianity that completely went bankrupt with the dropping of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the nuclear bombs, the Judeo-Christian Western world went bankrupt morally. And right now we have cherry picking Judeo-Christians that think that they are right, but they try to bar the idea as they usually do, the ignorance, the deluded, the swine from the fact that they are responsible for centuries of destruction. If we try to seek any form of immoral behaviors in the present day, we can strengthen ourselves with the history of ideas. The modern sexuality is a hiccup after a Victorian morality and observing the previous epochs of rustical rich sexuality of classicism, neoclassicism, baroque, and neither Mozart was a saint nor Farinelli just like the damsels of these epochs. When I was watching the movie The Devils of Ludon, we can see how possessed by sex and diabolical fantasies, nuns, were just begging to be possessed in a mass psychosis and a fantastic performance that made the king, the sun king, Louis XIV, astounded that to the most tasty of his uh, happiness, he couldn't believe and would be entertained beyond his furthest imaginations observing this whole spectacle. It is like in the old forms of abortionist, anti-abortionist that are crying live along with God as if gods and divinities had anything to do with them. There are the modern sewer of the projection of the delusions of previous ultra-conservative views that actually hit from the underground of the undercurrents of society just like the inverted currents as in far left a degenerate neolibertinism that is a complete vulgarization of intellect that shows cheap shallow orgies in which degenerate minds and bodies are submerged and then those posed above all caricature kitsch that is offending even turpistic aesthetics. So ethical laws are derived from reason, just like the scientific theology is derived from intellect. So normatively it should constitute a moral sentiment that is fortifying both trust and cooperation if we will wish to follow the ancients and the reason and intellect are derived from divinity gnosis or understanding truly is too so everything that contradicts reason and intellect and well derived hypothesis furthered by argumentation of the highest sort of uh, pitching your thoughts to the divine is simply Judeo-Christian delusional ignorance. Now only Jews and Christians contradicted that. That happens that ethics of imperative is divine, but it is wholly immoral. The gods are immoral. Let us center this all that in Roman jurisprudence it was said observe the excesses of a given society and then let the law be regulated, regulate them in such a way that it will cut out all the superficial things, promoting the middle and directing it towards the standards of reason. Now, I don't want to leave behind an impression that everything is amoral and sanctioned by ethos. I believe that ethos, if it is derived from reason, observation, insightful observation and justice, at least when it is normative, is wholly moral. Yet this is a Western understanding of morality, modern one. Moreover, everything that is human or more human, unlike the other, is human in the sphere of humans. So the issues that are concerning the high level social constructs that are seen as repulsive or immoral, they must be so only from the perspective of the beholder or a given group. 
In another way, the consensus falls apart and we can, in such a situation, imprint all the bestiality and idol into nature to which a human being is capable. And this time it is not sanctioned by the ethos of sacrality, like in ancient India, but it is deregulated by chaos of disorder that you will find in bestial murders, sadism, in different psychopathological orders of political economical ideas in the international scene, where the hangman's tree is guarded by the vulgarization of sexuality, a cheap festival of brutality, and all forms of extremes that have absolutely no discipline. And when you unleash them, release them from the hook, they cut the human heads one by one. I hope that explains a lot. Thank you.